Let's connect an LED to the DZ. Hi, this is Takumi from Electrosmith. In the previous tutorial, we triggered a note by pressing a button. In this video, we're going to learn how to light up an LED with the DZ seed so that we can add visual feedback to our synth. The goal is to map the amplitude of the oscillator to the brightness of the LED. So, when the tone gets louder, the LED will get brighter, and vice versa. Okay, let's get started right away. For this video, all we need is an LED, two more jumper wires, and a resistor. To learn how these audio jacks, button, and potentiometers are connected, please watch our previous tutorials. LED is a commonly used component that turns brighter when there's more current running through it. In order for current to run through, we need to connect one leg to positive power and the other leg to ground. And we also need a resistor to limit the excess current in order to prevent the LED from burning out. Okay, let's add an LED to our breadboard to see it in action. If we look at the LED legs closer, we see that one leg is longer than the other. The direction that we insert the LED actually matters. So the long leg needs to be connected to the positive power rail with a resistor in between. And the short leg needs to be connected to the ground rail. And with the daisy powered on, we see the LED lighting up. Because we're connecting an LED to a positive power that has constant voltage, in this case 3.3 volts, the brightness will be constant as shown, since the amount of current is not changing. So, in order to adjust this brightness, we need to connect it to a positive power that can change. Luckily for us, the DC seed has two different ways of outputting adjustable voltage. One way is to use PWM, which allows us to output varying voltages between 0.0, .0 volts to 3.3 volts. Any of the DAISY's pins that have the letter D can be used for input or output. In this case, a PWM signal output. So what is PWM? In the previous tutorial, we used the DAISY's pin as digital input. We can also use the pin as digital output, which can either output 0.0, .0 volts or 3.3 volts. These types of pins are typically referred to as GPIO, which stands for General Purpose Input Output. Now let's look at this diagram here. When we output a PWM signal, the pin is outputting 3.3 volts and 0.0, .0 volts back and forth rapidly. That'll look like a square wave when we draw that out like this. So this first one, we're outputting 3.3 volts 50% per cycle and 0.0, .0 volts 50% per cycle. This averages out to 1.65 volts per cycle. Next, let's output 3.3 volts 75% per cycle and 0.0, .0 volts 25% per cycle. This averages out to 2.475 volts. So, by changing or modulating the width of the high-low pulse, we can output varying voltages between 0.0, .0 volts and 3.3 volts. Because this is all happening really fast, PWM is great for changing the brightness of an LED. Our eyes won't be able to keep up, so we will not see this signal as an alternating high-low pulse. But if we wanted to use the DAISY's output voltage as control voltage or CB for modular synth, we'll need a signal that's more accurate and stable than the PWM signal. For that application, we should use the DAISY's two DAC pins. Because the goal of this video is to light up an LED, we'll come back to these DAC pins in a future video, where we learn more about them and send CBs to a modular synth. For this tutorial, we'll be using pin D24 for PWM output. So instead of connecting the longer leg to the positive power rail, let's grab a jumper wire and connect to pin D24 instead.
And that's it. Let's start programming. Here's the code for PWM output. All we need to do is to use the analog write function to output a PWM signal. 24 is the pin number. And we're using a for loop where the variable i will increase from 0 to 255 over time. It increments by 1 every 10 milliseconds. So, pin 24 will output voltages from 0.0, .0 volts to 3.3 volts in about 2.5 seconds. Let's flash and see the LED glow brighter over time. Nice! Now the fun begins. Let's open up the code that we have been building up. We'll map the amplitude variable to the brightness so that when we trigger the attack decay envelope upon pressing the button, which will increase and then decrease the amplitude over time, the LED will become brighter and then dimmer over time in similar fashion. We only need to add one line of code actually. Inside of the for loop in my callback, we add analog write 24 amp knob times amp button times 255.0. With the amp knob twisted all the way up to 1.0, and as the attack envelope ramps up towards the maximum value of 1.0, the LED will increase towards full brightness since 1 times 1 times 255.0 is 255.0. And when the decay envelope is ramping down towards 0.0, the LED will decrease in brightness. Let's change the attack and decay times to be slower, and also change the waveform to Sawtooth. Let's see this in action. Awesome, success! We got ourselves an awesome hardware synth. There are knobs for controlling pitch and volume, we can trigger a note with the press of a button, and we now have an LED for visual feedback. So, moving forward with the tutorial, it will be more of a one-off type video rather than building upon breadboard circuits from previous lessons. Main reason being that the circuit is starting to look a bit too cluttered for a video. It's super exciting that there is still plenty to explore. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.